Hi, I'm Sharice from the Kokomo Harry County Public Library, and this is Stephanie. Hello. We've done a lot of the Harry Potter programs for the past five years. Um, Stephanie is a Gryffindor, and I'm a Hufflepuff, and today we are doing the Butterbeer Tasting that was supposed to be an in-person program on July 31st, Harry Potter's birthday. Um, the first recipe that we are going to try is the frozen butterbeer. Um, this is made pretty easily using a blender and it just has some ice cream, some butterscotch flavoring, um, some vanilla. Um, this one was pretty quick and simple to do. So we're going to give it a shot. That's very good. Yeah. It's um, kind of runs close to the frozen one at the Universal. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, this one actually tastes pretty close to the ones in Universal. Um, if you've ever been there, their butterbeer is fantastic, so we always try to compare the butterbeer that we supply at programs to Universal recipes. Yeah, I like this one. Do too. It's a win. And if you want um, extra coolness, you can freeze your mugs for a little bit and then pour it in. Yep, and if you want your frozen butterbeer to be a little bit more slushy, you would just freeze um, cream soda in ice cube trays overnight and add all the ice cubes that you want. Okay, for our next recipe, we tried a vegan um, cold butterbeer. So this one isn't frozen, um, but it's cold and it is also gluten-free and oil-free. Um, so if you have a sensitive stomach, this is a really good recipe for you. Um, this is the what we used. You can get this at Meyer. It's called So Delicious, and we used salted caramel cluster. You can also use a vanilla if you can find it, um, but if not, that's a really good substitute. This is cashew milk, but you could probably use coconut milk or almond milk. Yes. Oh, that's sweet. Mm -hmm. That's really sweet. Little tangy. Nothing. Yeah, it is a little tangy. I don't think I like this one as much. Yeah. I don't like it with the tang. Right. I think it's a good recipe if you are vegan or allergic to gluten or can't use oil. Mm -hmm. But this isn't my first choice. I'm sure there are things that can do to make it a little bit better. Um, this also used apple juice, um, so maybe a little less apple juice. Yeah. I wonder if the apple juice is making it. It might tangy. be the apple juice and the nutmeg mixed together. Yeah. So. We're back again, and this time we have the butterbeer latte recipe. This one is made with hot coffee, um, whipping cream, and then just some toppings. So we'll see how it is. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> I taste a little bit of sweetness. Yeah. So I think if anybody tries this one, I would suggest starting out with at least twice as much as the butterscotch topping. Yeah. You put that in the cup first. Um, and this recipe just called for a very little bit. So if you want a little bit more flavor, I suggest adding more butterscotch topping. Yes. But it's okay. All right. All right, we are back with another butterbeer recipe. This one is actually a steamed one and requires a little steamer wand that you can pick up at Meijer for about seven bucks. Um, this one is actually a two-part one where you mix half of it and you can actually freeze it and then you add the second half to it um, after warming up some milk. So this one is not vegan friendly, um, but I'm sure that you can substitute with a plant-based milk if you wanted to. So this one is warm, so we'll give it a go. Very good. Mm -hmm. Very good on a fall 
yes. chilly day. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I like. I think I like this one the best. Mm -hmm. And the mixture actually looks like cookie batter. So I guess it's why you can freeze it because it's so thick, and you can freeze it for up to three months according to this recipe. Um, and then you just add a small dollop to it, um, to your mixture, and stir it in, and that's it. It's pretty simple. All right, we'll be back with one more recipe. All right, we're back with our last recipe. Um, this one you can actually make in either a crock pot or an instant pot. Um, the small batch only took us about two hours. The recipe says about three to four. Um, so just judge it by your container, I guess. Um, this one actually has quite a few ingredients in it. Um, and it's the first one we've used that requires cinnamon sticks. Mm -hmm. So I think this one's probably going to be good for fall as well. Yes. But it's definitely warm. Um, and I think this will be a good one to like have at Harry Potter parties and yes. stuff. And the cinnamon sticks you can find with the other spices in there, the actual sticks, but they're in a little plastic container like the ground spices. Yes. All right. It's pretty good. I don't think it tastes as flavorful no. as the other ones. It's a lot more subtle. Um, I will say that this one required a ton of butter. Yeah. Um, so if you're sensitive to that, just be aware. Um, I think maybe if there was more cream soda in it. I think so. I think this one does. There is a butter, butter, good butter taste. To yes, it. there's a good butter taste, but I think it requires a little bit more cream soda. All right. Well, thank you for joining us for this butter beer tasting. We know that it's kind of a bummer that it couldn't be in person, but. Hopefully we still had some, yes. we could still bring some fun to your home. Um, you'll be able to find all these recipes um, with the video and we will actually have recipe cards available at each of the branches. All right, have a good day everyone. Thank you.